Hi, welcome back to the Blind LP of Eagle Eye Mysteries in London. Today our partner is Jennifer and we're going to start on on the case of the alien assassin. So let's begin. Okay, it's the phone now. Oh no, I forgot his voice. Do I have the honor of addressing Jennifer Eagle? Mm, yes, you do. I guess. I'm Jennifer Eagle. Can I help you? Indeed you can. This is Lord Pomeroy. May I request that you and Starkazi Gamer meet me at once in the Chambers of Parliament. It's a most urgent and secret matter of state. Something to do with aliens, but you do not know that yet. Wow. Wow, Lord Pomeroy, we'll be there. We'll be right there. Where is the Parliament? Hmm. All right. Is this our first time? I'm not so sure. I I'm not so sure. This Lord Pomeroy, Stakaze. Now stand up straight. We're on official business for the British government. Alright. Welcome St Jennifer and Starkazi, and thank you for coming over so promptly. I have an urgent assignment for you. But first, I must insist that everything I tell you be kept in the strictest confidence. No one else may know about what we discuss today. Now then, I have been officially invited to participate. Oh, okay. In another of Lady Edna's murder mystery parties. But, Stokazi, I must tell you, I am perfectly dreadful at these things. Or oh, were you the victim in the last one? <laughs> the dead body. Last time, I wrongly accused the ambassador to Italy. And we very nearly had a diplomatic incident over a murder mystery party. What? All of Italy might have been angry at us all over such a tiny mistake. Okay. Could I please appoint you two to be my official representatives at this party? Sure, Lord Pomeroy. I don't have to put on my best dress or anything, do I? I'd love to see you in a dress. Well, normally you would, but for this occasion, I grant you special permission to wear your normal clothes. I also give you clearance to read this top secret file. It's background for the case. The party is being held at Warwick Castle Hall. My office has already gotten your Uncle Basil's permission for you to go. Here are your bus passes and train tickets. Good luck. Alright. Let's go. Are we going to have another map thing going on here or can we just go there directly? Stakazi, we've got a couple of minutes before our train arrives. Let's look at this top secret file Lord Pomeroy gave us. Sure. The file is marked for your eyes only top secret in big red letters. Wow. Inside are a few papers. Check it out. Here's a program for the murder mystery party. It says when we arrive, everyone will be playing their parts. Alright. Lady Edna Sopcoats will be playing Lady Eustace Peppered. Wow. The owner of Warwick Castle. Julia Beeswing plays her maid. Of course she does. Felicity Wiles. Dr. Mercury is Professor Deebles, a biologist. Miss Drumright will be playing Miss Barnum, an events promoter. Hmm. And Mr. Fer Fresky <laughs> and Mr. Frescura will play Dr. Fig Bodum. Fig Bodum. An astrophysicist. Astrophysicist. 
Colonel oh there's a lot of people there's a lot of people Colonel Sweeney is Sergeant Spangler a retired army officer and get this stuck are they? it says Vevelsberzuk the alien will play himself there's an outer space alien at this party there's another official looking document here it's like a spy report it says Rumors about the sighting of an alien from outer space at Warwick Castle are confirmed to be true. Wow, don't fall for it Jennifer, it's fake. It's just a play kind of thing. Lady Eustace Peppert claims the alien is a guest. No official action has yet been taken. Recommend you send experienced representatives to, representatives to investigate. That's us. Cool. Cool, Sakaze. The people at the party will be pretend like an alien really has landed and is hanging out at Warwick Castle. And here comes our train. Let's go meet this alien from outer space. Yeah, let's go. I'll look over the files some more as we travel to Warwick Castle. Alright. Oh, I can't skip. I can't skip. Oh, wait, wait okay. I'm trying to find... Oh, okay, never mind. I'm sorry. There's the alien, Stakaze. Don't stare. Just act normal. Good day, everyone. We're here on behalf of Lord Pomeroy and the, Bri and the British government. Welcome. I'd like to intru introduce our special guest, Mr. Valbazug from Autumn. Oh my goodness. Something terrible has happened to Mr. Valbazug. He took a sip of his drink and killed right over. What on earth is going on? Aha! Uh -huh. This must be the murder. Let's investigate Stakaze and do Lord Pomeroy proud. So an alien has been murdered? The murder mystery party is using a realistic looking stuffed dummy to represent the victim. Mr. Valbazug, the alien. Okay, that didn't tell me much. Let's look at the thing he was. Is it? Is that the meal? You know, Stakaze, the alien took one sip from his teacup. Oh yeah, teacup. And then, boom, he was dead in his chair. What was he drinking? Tea, maybe? Oh, okay. Cocoa, Miss Eagle. Just ordinary cocoa. Cocoa? I think not. I quite distinctly heard him order tea. Well, Miss Wiles is right. There is just that is just ordinary ordinary cocoa in the alien's cup. There's just a little bit left. Did anyone else order cocoa? Hmm. Yes, Miss Barnum did. She was the only other cocoa drinker. Oh. Uh, Okay, I've seen you. Give me a moment. I need to cough. Okay. Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. I drank mine. It was perfectly delicious. Nothing wrong with the cocoa at all. Miss Barnum's cup used to have cocoa in it. Is it cocoa or cocoa? Cocoa, right? But now it is empty. I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna check it. I'm just gonna make sure. Okay, yes, it was cocoa. Miss Barning, Miss Barnum's cup used to have cocoa in it, but now it is empty. All right. Mm, I guess we'll talk to you, Colonel. Lord Primrose notes say Colonel Sweeney is playing Sergeant Spangler, a retired army from a retired army officer. Well, he's gone now, is he? Good. Don't like aliens, can't trust them. Who knows what they're up to in their misshapen purple hates? Well, well, yes. But you sound like you've come across a lot of aliens, though. Although I have to admit, he spoke English pretty well. Had kind of an American accent, though. Got it from the telly, I imagine. Right. I'm curious about you actually, who are you? Oh, it's Lady Edna. Let's see, Lady Edna is playing Lady Eustace Peppert. 
as opposed to salt. So pepper, get it? This is terrible. Velvet is was a guest in my castle. What shall I tell the bad members of my bridge club? They were so excited about meeting him next Thursday. Do you have any idea who in this group might want to murder an alien? Oh no, he was so well behaved. Always said please and thank you, and really caused no fuss at all, except for that row of felicity. My maid, of course. What? Row? What's that all about? Uh, no, I didn't ask what's row. A row is a disagreement, an argument really. Felicity got quite upset when Velbezek accidentally er uh, ate her favorite pet goldfish. Okay, poor goldfish. The alien, the alien ate her goldfish. Yes, Nadine. I mean, Nadine was the name of her goldfish. I'm afraid Velbezek thought it was a snack, you know, like candy in a dish. And before we could stop him, he'd popped Nadine into his elbow. What? That's not how you eat. Into his elbow? Yes, that's where his mouth is. I mean, was. I mean, his mouth is still there. In his elbow, I mean, but he's not there. I mean, here. Do you know what I mean? Yes. I'm trying to look at his elbow, but I can't really see. Hmm. Oh well. Okay. Our secret file says Mr. Frescura is playing an astrophysicist. Physicist. Physicist. Named Dr. Fig Bottom. Bottom, uh, I don't know. An astrophysicist, physicist, studies stars and planets. He probably had a few villains, zillion questions for a person from outer space. What a tragic murder! I'm sure that once Mister Velbezik got to know me, I mean us, he would have shared his technological secrets with me. I mean with us, you know, with humans like me. Then we could have built our own spaceships and learned so much more about our solar system and our galaxy. I can tell you how maddening it is to, to only be able to look at our universe through a little telescope. People like Miss Barnum just don't understand how important a meeting like this really was. All she could think about was how much money she could charge people to see the alien from outer space if only he would let her take him on a tour. All right, Miss Barnum is the fake name, okay? Mm -hmm. The alien, Mr. Velbazog, told her quite firmly that he would never charge people to money to see him. Never charge people money to see him. Oh, ho, oh, that really made her furious. All right. Who are you? According to our secret file, Miss Drumright is playing the ruthless promoter, Miss Barnim. Oh, we haven't talked to her yet. Hmm. You know, I don't think there was a murder committed here at all. I'm sure this is all just a tragic mistake. It's re it's really too bad the world will not be able to meet Mr. Velbazook. It's too, too bad. Of course. I imagine people will line up for kilometers just to see his body. And pay a lot of money too. A lot of money. Well, you have a motive. Hmm. Hmm, I see one of the chairs is empty. Is there someone missing from this hall? Yes, Miss Eagle. Dr. Winthrop Dibbles decided to take the air just before I brought in the refreshments. If you'll just step right this way. Let's see, Dr. Mercury is playing Professor Winthrop Thibbles, a biologist of high renown. 
Biologists are people who study life in all its forms. The, 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 uh, these people are all doing pretty well in their acting. Although I noticed Lady Anna has a hard time keeping a straight face. Oh, that's the UFO. Have I seen you? I don't remember you. Good day. So, you have come to visit with our unusual friend, have you? Don't you find him most interesting? Actually, we find him mostly dead. <laughs> Dr. Devils, he killed over in mid -sip. We were wondering if he knew anything about it. Dead? Good heavens, I warned him, actually, about eating our food and drinking our drink. Things are, which are yummy to us could be bad for an alien. Chocolate in particular could be dangerous for him. Many people don't know that cocoa is an ingredient in chocolate. I mean, that cocoa, an ingredient in chocolate, is actually rather toxic to most animals. Alright? Really, Dr. M I, I mean, Professor Dibbles? Our dog ate a whole box of chocolate truffles once. And I guess he did get pretty sick. Oh my goodness. Yes, I imagine he would. You know? I want Felicity Wiles about serving Beast of Velvet any kind of chocolate. She was the only one. Oh, she was the only one I told about that. I doubt she would forget. She's such an efficient, efficient person. I wonder if someone deliberately switched camps with the aliens. Alien. Uh, maybe her. Is the alien's ship stuck as it? It looks pretty much like the ones you see on the cover of Gossip Miss of of Gossip Magazine. Hey, is someone prowling around the ship down there? It looked like no, it was doc it was Dr. Figbottom. It looked like he had some keys in his hand, but he couldn't find the door. Alright. You know, Dr. Figbottom was furious because the alien wouldn't let him into his spaceship or tell him anything about its technology. Mr Val Valzak said that humankind wasn't ready for the technology he had. But Dr. Fickbottom didn't buy any of that. He wanted to get out and explore the stars himself right now. Well, he wouldn't be able to op operate it without knowledge. So I don't really see his motive for that. Oh, is that all? What? Okay, let us review the facts. Facts. Hmm. Let me look at the people first. The alien. I am surprised the alien is there. Why? Okay, we have Mr. Drum, right? Mr. Frescura. Sweeney, Julia B. Swing. But Julia B. Swing was the only one who knew that the Coco would kill him. Ready? Pick out the clues that show who bumped off our visiting alien. Or the clues that prove it was an accident. Hmm. Let's. Okay, firstly, the alien ordered tea, not Coco. Alright. Miss Barnum and the alien were the only two cocoa drinkers at the table. Well, Miss Barnum drank all her cocoa and found it delicious. Herm. Hmm. Hmm. Professor Devil's new cocoa would be toxic to the alien. Felicity Wells was the only other person he told about this. So we'll need to find her motive for that, which is um, him eating her goldfish, right? Um, Julia Basing plays the mate. Upset, alright. Okay. Drank all of her cocoa. Tragic mistake. Doesn't have anything to do with it. Nope, nope. And then it's gone. Nope. 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 So what else do I have that points 
to the killer. Hmm. This? All right. Good. Not pick out the alien assassin. If you think his death was accidental, pick the alien himself. Hmm. You got it. You got it. The maid Felicity Wells was a guilty one in this out of this world murder party. Our first big clue was the Coco the alien drank just before he died. Professor Dibbles knew that Coco was likely to be fatal to an alien, but he had no motive for the crime. He only told one other person about the Coco secret, the maid Felicity Wells. Felicity had a motive to murder the alien, revenge. After all, the alien had eaten her favorite pet goldfish. Oh, that was fast. Hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Alright, that's fine. So, we're done. We're done with this case. And in the next episode, we will take on case of the Rajas Ruby. So, until the next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.